Hello and welcome to another vlog from Narrowboat Super V. Today we are at Shardlow in Derbyshire for the Shardlow Inland Port Festival of 2022. Before the building of the canal, Shardlow had been a river port, but it really started to develop as a canal port from 1760 with the opening of the eastern section of the Trent and Mersey. Being near the junction between the canal and the River Trent, Shardlow became an important transshipment point between canal boats and the larger river crafts. And before very long, there were various wharfs, basins and warehouses for coal, timber, lime, cheese, salt, iron and other general merchandise. During its heyday from the 1770s to the 1840s, it became referred to as Rural Rotterdam and Little Liverpool. And today, Shardlow is considered to be Britain's most complete surviving example of a canal village. This building is a salt warehouse, built by Thomas Sutton and his son James in the 1790s. The Suttons became an important canal carrier in the late 18th and early 19th century, with various river and canal boats carrying goods all over the country. They later took on the Shardlow Boat Company and became boat builders. Holden House, which was shown at the start of the video, is a grade two listed 18th century Georgian house and it's now used as a guest house but was formerly the Holden Arms and a post office. On the left hand side you can see what was formerly the canal tavern. It had a bakery, butchery and stabling and this building of course is the Lockhouse Cottage and it was used by a lock keeper up until the 1960s. The brick built bridge you can see in the background is called the Idle Bridge. The original name came from the fact that canal workers would loiter here while waiting for work. This bridge carried the old London to Manchester road. And this is one of the many basins and wharfs that were built around the canal. Well that boat's taking people out and it, the one on the front saying uh, we need to go forward, we need to win backwards. But surely they've done it hundreds of times before, unless it's a brand new crew. No, he's got it right, he knows what he's doing. <laughs> Holding the front steady. So it's just doing 180 degree turn. This building, now a restaurant, was built in 1780, built as a warehouse and known as the Clock Warehouse, and it was known as Mill Number no. 2. Its archway allowed boats to go under the building for loading and unloading and keeping everything dry. And then just over from the clock warehouse is the Heritage Centre, built in 1770 and was originally a sole warehouse. And you can see all those vintage narrowboats that are moored there permanently. And if you're ever up this way, either driving through or even going up to the Trenton Mersey on your boat, the Heritage Centre is well worth a visit. It gives you the history of Shardlow right from its beginnings right up to present date. of Shardlow was flourishing and businesses were being developed alongside included boat builders, rope walks, stables and offices including the head office site of the Trent and Mersey Canal plus workers cottages and owners houses notably the Salisbury's with their rapid horse drawn fly boats on the River Trent and the Sutton's with their barges and narrowboats. The population rose from 200 in 1780 to a peak of 1300 in 1841 However, with the arrival of the Midland Railway and its associated branch lines in the 1840s, this signalled the beginning of the end, and by 1861 the population had fallen to just 945, and by 1886 the porch was virtually abandoned. The formation of the nationalised British waterways in 1947 resulted in the removal of the formal designation of Shardlow as a port and the last grain carrying narrowboat delivered its cargo to Shardlow in the early 1950s. The Trent and Mersey Canal starts at its junction with the River Trent, a mile downstream from Shardlow at Derwent Mouth, and connects with the Bridgewater Canal near the River Mersey, 93 miles away at Preston Brook, near Warrington in Cheshire. 
Derwent Mouth Lock is the first of 76 locks on the route. Up to Burton Trent, the locks were constructed large enough to take the broad beam river boats but had to use the river as far as Burton before the canal was built. James would have been here and he, he knows everything about these engines. So what's this boat called? Marie Babette. And what age is it? It was built in 99 and launched in 2001. Oh, so only like 20 odd years old then? Hmm. You took ownership of it? About eighteen months ago. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't seem like a straightforward engine, does it? You got oh, no. all this lot to. Uh, Definitely nothing straightforward about it. No. A lot of cleaning as well, though. All, all, all this work here. A lot of polishing. All fill spate original paint work on the doors, on the hatches, and on the outside. These buildings are also former warehouses. This building is a former grain store, and you can see in the middle of the picture what was called the bottling crane. On the other side of this fence, now filled in, well, this was once a wharf and was occupied by the Sawbridge in the early years of the port and later by the Suttons in the 1820s. Note the rectangular warehouses with their sunburst windows. Now you can see on this narrow boat the size of the engine. The engine was put in after the boat was built and you can see on the roof there where they've loaded the engine in and then recovered the roof. And there you see another example of a former warehouse now turned into a home with its branch arm going alongside. Across the canal is the Malt Shovel, originally a malt house built in 1799 by Humphrey Moore, 
It was auctioned off by his nephews after his death in 1816 and is said to be haunted by Humphrey Moore. The new inn public house was built as a beer house at the time of the opening of the canal and was owned by Mary Cope. It offered accommodation to boatmen at the time. And this is the home of the Salisbury family, built in the 1770s, some 20 years before Broughton House was built. This family had originally been river carriers at the nearby Cavendish Bridge before the canal was built and moved up into the village to extend their business. They became large carriers of goods on the river and canal. This is the rear of Broughton House, built by Thomas Sutton in the 1790s for his son James. Legend has it that the house was built originally to deliberately block the view from the house of the rival family, the Salisbury's. Some people say that James Sutton never lived there. And just over the road from Broughton House is a navigation inn. This was also built by the Suttons in the 1778-79 and at one time had a butcher's shop attached. Well, thank you for watching. If you'd like to subscribe, please do. And if you like this video, please give it a like and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks again. Bye-bye.